Hello dudes, this is B Jr. back on the podcast number two, the sequel. Yes, that's right, podcast number two, the second story, like house two. Get a little water down the old gullet there. It's time, guys. It is time for the Argento-thon. That's right, the films of Dario Argento. What we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at a lot of his greatest hits films. Not necessarily every film that guy's ever done because he's wrote tons of projects and he's directed over 20 films to my knowledge. And it would take about four or five podcasts just to do all his films. So we're not going to do that today. But what we are going to do, like I said, is a lot of the, the bigger known titles that he's done over the years, his core, core required reading titles, if you will. And also a lot of the, the films that he did, we'll do a few films that he did throughout the 90s and early 2000s. And we'll cap it off with a, uh, a mini-review of his most recent Jalo film entitled Jalo, or psychological thriller or horror film, whatever you want to call it. We'll get more into that later. Um, but I happened upon it at a uh, local uh, video store closing for the supreme price of $2. So I got it, brought it home, view it. So it's the one that's been kind of on everybody's mind because it's not really widely released in the States, so it's kind of a little bit harder to find unless you... Can Netflix it or somewhere like that to try and get a copy of it so we'll talk more about that later we're gonna dive right in here guys we'll try to do most of these in chronological order if I mess up don't shoot me too much about it but uh, we'll do our best today the first one I'm gonna talk about is the bird with the crystal plumage that's right there it is basically the bird with the crystal plumage is his directorial debut to my knowledge and a straight-up Jalo film. And let me go ahead and say, before we get too deep into this, you're probably asking yourself, and if you've been hiding under a rock and you don't know what Jalo means, Jalo is basically just a, it's a, the most direct translation is yellow. It's the English translation is the word yellow. Um, see, in Italian filmmaking, um, Jalo books or yellow books were yellow-bound spined books that were kind of like Pulp Fiction novels. They had a lot of exploitation, horror, thriller type stories in there. And basically, whenever the Italian filmmakers of the day, you know, like Dario Argento, got into making films, they took on a, it took on a different meaning and just became kind of the secondary meaning to the word because what they did was they took the style of those old novels and made them into films like uh, slasher films and things of that nature. But, but had the same essence or storylines as those film as those uh, those old yellow bound books. So over here in the states, it took on a different meaning. Jalo became kind of the subgenre of the film itself. We would normally call them slasher films or something like that, but they became uh, known as Jalo films because they were based on those old yellow books, and they they all have that same kind of Italian flair of style over substance and what I mean by that is a lot of times they didn't worry about ADR or any of the recording of the voices they were going to redub the whole thing anyway for American audiences so they didn't have a whole big high-tech microphone system on the set what they would do is just some some actors would usually be talking American if they were American actors talking English or some people would be talking German some people would talking Italian all these different languages, it didn't matter because they were going to redub the whole script anyway according to the acting on the screen. So <laughs> so there's your kind of mini education on what a Jalo film is. It's basically a horror slash slasher ex exploitation film of the day. Um, and it took on that because it came out of the Italian uh, catalog of filmmaking back during the, those time frames. Um, Getting back to the point, in the first film in the Argento uh, collection that we're going to talk about today is The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. The Bird with the Crystal Plumage is basically a uh, straight-up giallo film directorial debut of uh, Dario Argento. It's probably not his best one, in my opinion, but it's right up there. It's a, it's a straightforward, faster-paced giallo film that he's done. He didn't get bogged down in any major storylines or anything of that nature. Um, it follows all the guidelines of a good Jalo film. It follows a uh, basically the story of this guy who's getting there, there's a killer on the loose, and the killers in these films usually wear black gloves or some kind of gloves on their hands because. And an interesting tidbit on the trivia side is that always the hands in Dario Argento's films is usually him. 
he's doing all the hand insert filming or you know of those portions of the movie so if you see a knife raise up with a glove gloved hand that's usually Dario Argento doing that part of the film just putting his little directorial touch on all his films so um, Bird with Crystal Plumage just a straight up film um, there's a killer on the loose uh, there's a couple trying to figure out who it is there's a lot of mystery in these films and especially in the Bird with Crystal Plumage about who it, there's always that question of who done it and basically they keep you uh, keep you on edge until the very end of the film and there's usually some kind of twist ending or a twist about who the killer is that type of thing um, the, the, the major con to a bird with a crystal plumage is that its availability works against itself because it's not widely available. In fact, the Blue Underground DVD that came out a couple of years ago has already went out of print from what I understand from their uh, website. You can still find it on Amazon and eBay, places like that, but you're going to pay through the nose or more than I would pay. you gotta, you got to remember I'm an eternal cheapo. I wouldn't pay a whole lot of money for these films anymore, but... Uh, Basically, you can Netflix it. Um, the Netflix version of it is kind of a low-grade transfer, but it gets the job done. I believe it's in widescreen, so um, not a whole lot of availability. I believe you can buy an abundance of it on uh, different versions of it on Region 2, but be careful. And as with many of Argento's films, especially his earlier films, for whatever reason, if you buy Region 2, be very careful about what version you buy and even in the region one category of these films mainly because what I found through going through these over the last month or so is that especially as older films they've been the rights have changed hands a bunch of times and what has happened is you gotta be careful because a lot of times these little no-name companies have gotten a hold of the rights of these films they've released these full screen VHS rips on DVDs and they're really low grade quality on the picture quality and the sound quality and they basically just look cruddy they 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 censor the crap out of these films too they'll censor out like 20 to 30 minutes out of these films usually take all the gore out everything the kill scenes are and it messes with the storyline too and the dubbing so my best uh, advice to anybody that's looking to add some Argento films to their collection is to basically take your time with it Look for the Anchor Bay versions and or the Blue Underground versions that are coming out now. You won't be sorry in most cases because most or all of them are uncut, uncensored. The picture quality is decent. The sound quality is decent. And they usually throw in some behind-the-scenes interviews with Dario or himself um, or writers from the films. They do a pretty good job. They do it justice. So if you go with one of those two main companies, I don't think you'll be sorry in building up your Argento collections. Um, just know that there's an abundance of the crystal plumage, uh, bird with crystal plumage out there on these really cruddy versions. Uh, I'm not going to name any names because I don't want to uh, do any harm to any companies out there, but there are an abundance. If it doesn't look legit, don't even bother with it, even if it's a good price. You owe it to yourself to see Argento's films in a good format because they really pay attention to a lot of style in their films. They, they're good looking films, even if the storyline's a little light or paper thin you owe it to yourself to get crystal plumage and some of these films on a good transfer so moving on uh, let's get into the next film in this cadre here is catalog um, the cat of nine tails um, I have here the anchor bay version in my collection cat of nine tails is not my favorite argento film the story behind it is whenever he had the breakout hit with crystal plumage um, Producers and whatnot came knocking on his door and said, look, you know, we want you to just do another slasher giallo film. We want you to do Crystal Plumage 2 or something much like in the same vein as the one you just did. Argento, being the artist that he is, said, no, I'm not going to do that. And just despite them, basically, from what I've researched, did kind of a murder mystery and did a lot of stuff un giallo like in this film. He It's still kind of a murder mystery, but he, he puts a lot of his deadpan comedy in there and just mixed it up with a lot of different interesting characters in this movie so don't expect it to be the same type of giallo film that's going to come later in his works or like crystal plumage but uh, it's still kind of one of those required reading titles as I like to call them for Argento's uh, catalog mainly because it's a good building blocks film you get to see where he takes a lot of his building blocks that became that he did he, the, the building tools of this movie he took from this movie and went and used them to a better uh, degree in other films that he had later. 
Um, it basically has to do with a reporter and a blind man who used to be a reporter and uh, this little girl, I think it's the niece of the blind man, Carl Malden, uh, old uh, legendary actor of Hollywood, stars in this one along with some uh, other folks of the Italian fair. Basically, they, uh, they get kind of swooped up into this murder mystery. The murder happens and they're trying to figure out who did it and basically... It, like I said, it's a sophomore effort. Uh, I would highly get, recommend going with the Anchor Bay version because it's uncut and uncensored, just like with Crystal Plumage. This one's been edited to crap overseas and, and even in the U.S. over the years. And, and a lot of times you can't find a really good transfer of it. Beware of all these cheaper DVDs that are being sold out there. If it doesn't look good or if it's not Blue Underground or Anchor Bay, I wouldn't bother with it. Cat of Nine Tails, like I said, I would try to Netflix this one definitely before I would just jump right in and buy it because it's not in the same vein. It's not a straight-up Jalo, you know, slasher, somebody's dead every 20 minutes kind of film, not a body count film really. But it's just an interesting story, and you get a little bit of humor in it, a little bit of quirky oddness in it that comes out in some of his later works. And uh, I don't know, it's just like I said, it's worth your viewing, but I wouldn't run it out and buy it right off the, right off the bat. Let's get a little drink of water. This is a one-man show, guys. i got to rest my voice as we go. Ah, that was the sound of the water going down the pipes. The next one, guys, that we have is Four Flies on Gray Velvet. That's right. The third film that I'm going to talk about today. Dario Argento kind of went back to the source material of the Giallo. And I love the tagline on this one. When the flies start to crawl, so will your flesh. Yeah. Um, let's see. It says here, too, if you dare to see it alone, make sure someone escorts you home. I love these old taglines. They're awesome. The hand, the razor, the girl, the scream. Anyway, guys, this one's pretty good. It's a little more back to form with Crystal Plumage. Probably not his best one either. It's not... Uh, I don't really have a particular... Overall, I do have kind of my favorites of his Jalo catalog, but uh, this is another building blocks form, uh, or a, uh, building blocks uh, film for him. That basically, Cat of Nine Tails, this film, and Crystal Plumage kind of was like his learning school movies. Basically, it's a decent film overall, and I would definitely Netflix this one as well before you run right out and buy it. But uh, it's, you can see where he went back to form with the kill scenes in this movie, things like that. And the style of the movie kind of comes into play later with some of his films. I would probably try to pick up a decent version of this one too. This, his first three films have been just totally, you know, kind of censored and hacked up over the years. And if you can find a good Anchor Bay or Blue Underground, I don't think you'll be sorry on that one as well. Uh, straight up kind of Jalo type type film and I don't know it's one of those that I enjoyed watching and I added it to my collection I'm not sure if it's going to get many repeat viewings it, it'd be kind of like Cat of Nine Tails whenever I get bored of the other stuff I'll probably go back to this one but like I said Blue Underground did a good job on that one let's get into the one that kind of really took all the tools and brought it all together I am referring, of course, to Deep Red. Profundo Russo is, is known overseas. I probably just murdered that, uh, that <laughs> uh, pronunciation there. And you'll have to forgive me if uh, my overseas uh, listeners are tuning in. This, uh, the one I have is the Anchor Bay full-length uncut director's cut. Um, Deep Red has been released a few times by uh, Anchor Bay and or Blue Underground. Blue Underground is getting ready to put this one out, I believe, this month or next month in a full uh, uncut director's cut as well, but with uh, a full uncensored English version. And what I mean by that is, you'll notice if you get some of the prior releases like this one that I have, now this one is uncut, but for some reason in Deep Red and these earlier releases, you get like half English dubbing and then half Italian with subtitles in the movie. It has to do with the, the not, you know, like I said, style over substance and stuff. But I, I'm interested in seeing what the new Blue Underground Deep Red is going to have as far as an English redubbing or uh, full. It'll be a lot easier for us old Americans to watch it so we can uh, just turn on the English dub. That's what I usually do. I don't really bother with the, because uh, I don't know Italian and I don't profess to really ever know it. So it's just easier for me to enjoy it that way. Deep Red, as I was saying before, 
he took the tools that he learned in other films, those first three especially, and kind of culminated them all into a just an all-around great Jalo film. Now, the only, it's just, it's got a little bit of everything. The, the special effects are amped up in this film. It's one of the first films that he worked with uh, Goblin, the uh, Italian composers that uh, a lot of people most know them from uh, Dawn of the Dead soundtrack and stuff like that. They did a number of soundtracks with uh, Dario Argento, though. And I love their soundtracks because none of them are ever alike. They're always different. You don't, you can't just pick their music out like Jerry Goldsmith or something like that where you can tell it's just who this composer is. But uh, they got excellent, uh, excellent music in this movie for the soundtrack. Um, special effects are top-notch in this film. They really amped up the blood in this one a little bit and made it look more realistic, I thought. Uh, the killer is there again, black-gloved, and it's got a murder mystery in this one. Uh, the only thing that I can ever say is a con for Deep Red. Now, it's one of my faves of his uh, catalog, mind you, but one of, my, one of the things that always kind of put me off from Deep Red being the first one to go to on the shelf, I watch it every once in a while, but the thing is... It's got second act itis. That second act in the film, it's a little bit longer than his first efforts. This one's about two hours long versus the 90 minute mark. So the second act in this film has a good lull section in it where they're doing a lot of character development and it's enjoyable to a point, but you really want that third act to get there so you can really get invested in it. But the, the redeeming feature of it is the third act kicks, kicks, it kicks ass. I mean, I'm just going to say it. This, third act of the film really gets it back on track and really redeems the second act of the film so just know that going into it you gotta have an attention span longer than a gnat on, a gnat on speed to, to watch an Argento film because you really gotta get into it to really uh... and you really gotta like dubbed films too you can't just let that bother you if you don't like dubbed films you may not have a good time watching Argento films I'm already gonna say that because just about every one of them is dubbed so um, I, there again, Anchor Bay did a good release. Blue Underground's got some, got a Blu-ray and a re-release of it coming out. Stick to those, you'll have a good time. Let me take a little break here, guys. And when I come back, we'll finish up the Argento thon and go through some more greatest hits and uh, get it all done for you. Rock on, and I'll catch you here in just a few, just a couple minutes. <laughs> 